Hello, everyone. I'm uh, really excited to be here. Um, I've been, like so many others, in a crisis management mode since uh, late last night, and I just arrived half an hour ago. So this is actually kind of a break for me, uh, seeing that uh, we can still make things work, even though uh, uh, everything is uh, different. Let's just say that. Um, you might be staring at my slideshow, I assume. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, the commercial perspe or, uh, perspective of uh, what I've been working on uh, together with uh, Maros and team for uh, the last year or more. Uh, but uh, this is actually not going to be about the commercial uh, perspective. It's going to be a small talk about the journey we've been through and the lesson learned and what to be aware of in the, the Estevan market, where a lot of stuff is uh, bus and uh, hard to, uh, to decipher what is actually underneath uh, the beautiful uh, facade, so to say. Uh, if all goes well, I will uh, take more of a commercial and lesson learned perspective. And then I actually have uh, my colleague and uh, architect Tols Foss with me remotely. And then he'll try to jump in on the, uh, the last part of uh, the presentation, just like you had uh, Bo Finnemann on WebEx before. But uh, let's see. So uh, the setting is that uh, I work for a large uh, service provider, Scandinavian service provider called Globe Connect. And uh, in the past uh, year or more, we have been uh, working on introducing a SD-WAN offering to the market. And uh, introducing is, of course, uh, standard practice, uh, going through an first an RFI process, and then an RFQ process, and then a QC process with uh, a lot of the major vendors. And, uh, and this is basically where we started off. Um, first off, and this is maybe the easy part, I assume that if you want to go out today, all of you, and buy a SD-WAN solution, you would focus on features. So uh, I'm not going to go into deep with that. I just want to point out that when you go looking at features, there might be a lot of stuff that you would assume would be included in a SD-WAN solution. That is uh, unfortunately not the true always. Uh, some solution, they only do basic uh, tunnel encryption. Uh, and they don't actually include any of uh, the routing features that we would normally expect of, of a simple uh, van solution. So uh, remember basics like uh, basic routing, netting, actually not an SD-WAN standard or not an implemented standard in all solution, stateful firewall, uh, redundancy features, multicast, if that is important for you. And then again, we might think that SD-WAN is uh, the modern technology or modern technology overall. But uh, apparently IPv6 is also not uh, a default uh, in the, actually the major, uh, most of the major solutions. So keep out or keep out, uh, watch out if that's important for you. Uh, for us, uh, and I assume for a lot of you, uh, SD-WAN and tunneling and private networks is all about security. I guess that's where it starts. And that's also where it continues into the SD-WAN world. So uh, if you care about security, notice the details, so to say. Uh, make sure that, that you have role-based access, role access control for your interfaces. Uh, make sure the tunnels are actually built in a proper way, that the uh, keys are rotated once in a while. A lot of solutions actually use the same encryption key forever until something breaks, and then they might try to reestablish also using that encryption key. But, but uh, we, we had uh, higher expectations of what we wanted in our solution, so, uh, so keep out for that. And then uh, maybe the, the most obvious, uh, uh, maybe user customer facing feature is uh, the new fancy firewalls. If you want to go next ge generation UTM, unified threat management level firewalls, then uh, that's also something uh, that you need to, uh, to take, uh, get your around, head around. Oh, and yeah, and then there's something about the provisioning process. We'll get back to that later. Um, Learning from the solutions we've looked at, there's a core SD-WAN feature set, but, but down the road you will, in the current market with the current solutions, probably experience, or we at least experience, that we ended up having to choose between three peripheral feature sets. That means not that's features that you might want to include in the solution, but no vendor can actually provide them all in a 
uh, feasible manner at least, or uh, efficient manner. And uh, so you have to choose between, uh, in, in our experience, between either uh, security or uh, the uh, SD-LAN, SD Wi-Fi feature sets, that means integration of switch stacks and, and uh, Wi-Fi access points, or the, the, most, uh, the more uh, data center focused uh, feature sets. So um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, then a bit about the economics. Uh, SD-WAN economics is a bit different than we're used to in the service provider world. In the service provider world, it's all about ports and cables and digging and, and IPs and stuff like that. Uh, but but SD-WAN is uh, intellectual property based, so to say. So it's a piece of software and, and the, the economics around it is more like a piece of software that you would uh, acquire. Uh, and, and that software is usually based uh, or price based on, on features included or feature tiers as we call it or speed tiers and especially the speed tiers is a nasty one because for a lot of solutions it's actually consumption based uh, we are we are used to dealing with the uh, link speed cost or uh, line speed cost or port speed cost but here a lot of the vendors they actually try and, and uh, are, it's pretty difficult to get around being consumption based at least if you buy directly from vendors um, so just be prepared for that uh, that perspective, yeah. Um, yeah, and that's yeah. I'm not going to say more of that. Uh, then there's uh, the different CP schemes. Um, some vendors, they uh, let's just say some of the big ones that are very much into the hardware game, they try to tie together their software solution with their hardware stack. Um, that has pros and cons. It, it means there's a hard hardware uh, vendor login, uh, but that also means there's a really good support. So some of the alternatives are some are doing certified third-party uh, hardware. That means they certify uh, hardware from another vendor. Uh, and, and there you might have looser login, so you might have some selection of certified hardware, but it's also going to cost you on, on support and operational stability down the line. You will have to invest more in that and, and tinker around to make sure it works just as uh, you expect to. And then there's, of course, the, the, the wet dream option, which is, comes with downsides. And that is that you can go out and procure your own hardware, build your own CPUs just as you would like. But then you're probably going to, you have very little login, you can do whatever you want. But you're also gonna get no support, and uh, and we always we can already experience that 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 might be a problem long term. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then last part of uh, uh, Stevens' uh, wet dream, so to say, is the uh, VNF service chaining or NFV service chaining. Um, I guess you all know about it. We have these concepts of uh, or dreams about being able to have just a, you know a hypervisor or a orchestrator platform, and then we can deploy whatever. Uh, branded or uh, uh, feature-proven uh, uh, or security-proven uh, uh, software stack on top, being it a firewall or a underlay optimization engine for whatever correction, packet duplication, maybe a cache, whatever. And, and right now we see that it's still very expensive to do. You have to, let's just say, you have to be larger than us for this to be really economically viable. So, uh, so don't make it, if time to market is, for example, important, don't have it as a plan A. Have maybe as a, a future roadmap thing to dig into that. Um, yeah. then, then some high level differentiators. So when you have these, com this combination of features you're looking for and these uh, the economics of Estevan, then you end up having to look at some high-level differentiators that will ultimately lead you down your choice of solution or vendor or, or uh, integration strategy. Uh, and some things to consider is, of course, existing synergies. If you have a lot of boxes already of, from one vendor that might support Estevan on top, just not deployed, then it might be, of course, of port to you. Brand recognition, it's a thing. You, there might be some new players out there, but, but if the customers don't want it, if they want to see a, a, a specific brand and everything, that's something to consider. Then uh, there's, of course, all the feature qualification thing. I uh, already talked about that. The CP scheme, uh, following the CP scheme, that the CP scheme, that's the part where you need to decide on, on, uh, on branded or certified or white label. Uh, following that, there's always the logistics and support issue. 
especially in these corona days. Do the vendor have a nearshore stock or uh, are you going to get everything from China and are they prepared from cri for crisis situations? Very relevant in these times. And then, of course, uh, raw performance. Uh, some maybe more overlooked things that were important to us was the level of multi-tenancy. If you go out as a single enterprise, this might not be important for you, but uh, some, somebody like us, a service provider, we, for us to efficiently scale, then, then we, of course, need some level of multi-tenancy. And again, role integration, does the platform support both the, the operator, the implementer perspective, and the customer role, or do you need to build another portal, a custom portal, or custom feature sets to support different roles in, in, uh, in, in your whole uh, value proposition? Uh, and then, so of course, uh, feature integration, and by that I actually mean that a lot of solutions out there have been developed over time or uh, been assembled by mergers and acquisitions. And, and some of the solutions out there might on paper seem well, well, but when you actually dig into the interfaces and how things tie together, then they're actually not natively integrated. Then they're actually kind of, then you might have one interface for the firewall and you might have another interface for user management and another interface for X feature, et cetera. And um, might not be a problem, but, but it, it is a thing out there. And then, yeah, I'm not, I don't think I'm going into that, but, but for us, there's also, if we are a service provider, who are we competing with uh, when we choose such a solution? Are we, by, by selecting a solution, are we actually competing with the uh, direct-to-sales, a direct-to-customer market, or the system integrators, et cetera? Yeah. And then, of course, local resource presence. And that is usually very t closely tied to uh, CP logistics and support. So um, some, a few on the conclusion slides. In reality, there is no acknowledged industry, sta industry standards. There's huge differences in solutions out there. And, uh, and, and uh, there might be some standards, the MEF standards. Uh, the standards also uh, tried to, or built uh, together with the ONOC uh, consortium. Uh, but but actually the vendor sales, I mean, the sales engineers, and actually you will also experience when you have to go out and, and sell it to your uh, stakeholders, uh, users, customers, your boss, then they don't actually care about the standards. So uh, there is no standards uh, to lean against or anything like that. So you need to decide and prioritize your requirements, and that's completely, it, it counts no matter your role or your segment or the features, use cases, how much money you've got to come with it, uh, you've got to build it. Uh, it all comes down to, yeah, also control and risk management. Is uh, Are you going to do a, a big CapEx investment and are ready to take a large risk or, or do you want to try things out first, et cetera? Yeah. And that's, of course, where you can go do it yourself. That's actually very viable today if you have enough money and enough resources or you can actually contact somebody like us. We might not provide the, the best solution for you or the, the perfect match for you, we hope so, but at least you can, uh, can try it out first or within limited scope and, and, and uh, MRC based, so monthly recurring based instead of big CapEx investments. So uh, that's definitely a considerate, uh, considerate to make, yeah. So point is, it's still somewhat new, higher risk technology. Uh, what we ended up doing was selecting, uh, having to nail down our criteria, what did we think was important, and we uh, selected uh, a vendor called Versa Networks. Uh, they offered a, a full feature set, especially on uh, a full van feature set, and especially on the security uh, firewall feature set they, they scored high. They had a, a CP scheme that we liked. They both had this, the uh, some branded options, but they also had some certified options, so we could go the, like the safe way first, and then we could explore alternatives down the road. They provided proper performance. They had a high level of multi-tenancy and, and role and feature integration because it's a solution built for us demand from the ground up. It doesn't have like a lot of legacy and heritage, so to say. Um, and, and we, uh, we ate, ended up deciding that, that we would invest more in our own offering and weren't really interested in, in competing too much with the, with the, the DIY uh, solution, so to say. Yeah. And then, of course, price. Always price. Yeah. Um, but being honest about it, we also missed out on some things. We uh, thought we knew about this, or we, we, we thought 
we knew that there was some stuff that we would uh, that would, would counter against us uh, down the road after implementation, and and we've certainly seen that in real life. We see a high demand for SDLAN and the Wi-Fi. We also see a high demand for security, so we can't really say it was the wrong decision to downprice houses, but that's definitely you know, a, a thing, a part of the solution that we need to fix in the future or improve in the future. Uh, existing synergies, we chose a vendor that, that the company has no uh, prior relationship to. Uh, brand recognition, basically most of you guys don't know virtual networks. I can't blame them. I didn't know them two years ago. Uh, but that's, of course, going to be a... Uh, can be a challenge when going to market. Uh, CP logistics and support, yes, they don't have any near shore <laughs> resources and uh, and um, uh, and uh, engineers, etc. Um, but we are working around it. It's not gonna. We're not gonna fail because of these things. It's just lesson learned for you to uh, to uh, to know about. Then I'm gonna try and hand over to my colleague Tools. Hey guys, All right. So, want to talk a bit about the deployment of our Istvan solution. Uh, first of all, how a little bit about how we integrate with the rest of the company. So, uh, a big consideration is uh, for us is time to market. So, we've been set up as a separate division um, in the company. And that means we are independent of uh, other business units, including technology and uh, other product management. This gives us the opportunity to differentiate, differentiate ourselves and uh, be able to deliver on our, uh, yeah, on our points much quicker. It does um, have some downsides where you have to be diplomatic in some situations and also firm in others. Uh, but it's been working towards our benefits for now. Uh, and uh, as a point as well, it gives us the possibility to... Um, yeah, to uh, reinvent our processes and, yeah, take some chances as well. Um, one important point to take away from all of this is uh, to understand your integration points with all the legacy systems. Uh, we are, of course, uh, dependent on the underlay network and uh, how all other uh, parts of the company work. So in, at some points we have to integrate and uh, that cannot always be a smooth ride. You have to take into account people's uh, technical, both technical stuff, but also people's uh, uh, feelings uh, that's an important point. It's all you work with people on different both sides of the table. Yeah. So a little bit about the, the, the deployment and what it is we're actually building. So we're building SD-WAN, and SD-WAN comes with a lot of bus, and that uh, was very clear that uh, expectations. You had uh, better ideas about what SD-WAN is, both externally in the company and internally in the group itself. And we have spent a lot of time trying to uh, making sure that at least everybody in, internally in the group have the same expectations and are moving towards the same goals. Um, as Sebastian mentioned, we chose a not very known vendor, our solution and that has provided from a technical perspective, uh, limited documentation and knowledge base. So a lot of uh, digging and understanding of how the solution and infrastructure and systems and software actually work have been down to uh, actually trying stuff, testing stuff, looking into how to actually build everything. Um, you have so talking about the expectations again. You have to demystify expectations. Um, I think that is an important point from a technical perspective. You have to look at it and see how the technology works and then provide the tangible results that people can actually work towards and with. And uh, that goes both for the engineering team that we have in our group, but also for everybody that we integrate with. So that means delivery and product management, sales people, especially for sales, have to 
control the expectations yeah. and uh, show them what we can actually do with the, the software and the service, or less divine. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the last point about all of this is the more you understand or separate the levels of complexity so that you make sure that sales get what, what they uh, require or need for actually going forward with with, uh, with the product, developing it and sell, selling it. And that product management also have that uh, kind of idea. So, so trying to separate the complexity to make sure that people understand what it is we can actually do. Um, yeah, and uh, an important thing I keep reminding myself is people will always and forever understand technology on multiple levels. So um, building a, an actually Estevan setup solution, uh, it came back to infrastructure will and always will be infrastructure. So we built a, a physical data center with, uh, with racks, power, and hardware, setting up a VMware or hypervisor solution using VMware. And everything in, in that setup is uh, virtualized, as many of you will know. There's no uh, fancy things going on in that. You will need a basic infrastructure setup for providing these kind of setups. Um, also for the network part, it's a classical routing and switching and firewalling. Um, I think this is an important point that uh, we are not building anything exotic or using exotic set systems to set this up. Uh, it's all based on software that is deployed on a classical infrastructure environment. Um, so you need to keep your basics in check and making sure that uh, all the infrastructure that you build are set up with uh, best practice uh, methods um, as we are uh, reliant on that. So the actual software defined van, what is it and, and how are we we're utilizing it so uh, we have a central control plane uh, that manages everything. All the configuration and setup is done from the control plane or the controller. Um, and that is hosted again on the infrastructure that I mentioned before. Uh, and then all the data plane is in the local branch or CPE devices. So that is uh, where the decision power is and uh, where the packets are actually being. Uh, looked at and checked for whatever kind of policies that we put on the traffic. Uh, so a very basic uh, theme for SDN is it's all based on tunnels, 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 tunnels. You will see this uh, time and again where, where you look at it and you have to go into the configuration or the technical stuff and uh, you have to understand how the tunnels are created and set up, uh, which kind of tunnels are used and how they're used. Um, for specifically for VASA, they have a setup using uh, IPSEC and uh, VTEP, so that's VLAN based tunnels. And, uh, and they also put in some proprietary tunnel systems or protocols for uh, managing traffic. Um, yeah, the important point to understand uh, how tunneling works uh, for this kind of setup. Uh, the next point is about automation uh, with the software, and I think this is a general thing for both for software defined van or uh, SDN in general. That uh, this software imposes a lot of automation. This comes from uh, from first of all in the front end. So it's all uh, when you look at it from the outside, it's all GUI based or uh, provided with a very heavy API support for REST API. Um, so that's like the first level of automation that you will encounter. Uh, a lot of stuff happens automatically when you start to configure stuff in a GUI. Uh, you can uh, put a check mark in and then it will create a ton of configuration in the backend. Um, and that's the next point that whatever you do or how you look at it, there is uh, with the software, a lot of automation happens that you are maybe or maybe not in control over. Uh, and that goes for all the tunnel creation, virtual interface creation, routing, and then PLS setup. Um, 
a lot of the SD-WAN solutions or setups will will function with um, with where routing or BGP setups are done very efficiently, and uh, where community tags and other standard standard known technology is used. Um, but uh, just the setup and creation and configuration of it all is automated. So um, yeah, we uh, we are looking at a lot of routing instances. That is how they handle it specifically in, in Versa for our setup. Um, so the takeaway from all of it is uh, you need to understand the basic technology, all of this. You need to understand PGP and MPS for setting it up and how the tunnels work. Um, that is a that is the ground basis technology used for all of this. What they've done is just had put the software on top to automate uh, a lot of the setup. So understand the basics, but especially understand your your automation. Uh, with SD WAN, a, a very uh, hot topic is the zero charge provisioning. So uh, this have been, uh, it's a very important point for us because we as a service provider, we are focused on delivery, and delivery of uh, many, many solutions. And uh, the more efficient the install and delivery process is, uh, the better. Uh, we completely broke the existing <laughs> logistics process for, for this as, as they were not, uh, with SD-WAN, you also have a very hard dependency on authentication and uh, it's all of a sudden it's very dependent on this specific box that you have configured for the specific customer is installed at the specific location, which is uh, you know, some would say not very efficient, uh, myself included. And, um, but trying to work around that and trying to work around how to actually do zero charge provisioning so you avoid this kind of dependency on the, the hardware and location and, and customer side. Uh, have been a challenge. Um, so uh, in, into that goes that it's a very common practice that a lot of these manual tasks uh, is outsourced, and uh, that that does provide some flexibility, but it also doesn't mean that you're actually doing zero charge provisioning. Um, so what we are, are working with is. Uh, mostly a what we can call a one touch provision so you at all times have to configure the equipment at some point to actually make it uh, get the staging configuration required um, so uh, a point about how we are trying to evolve or how we're trying to fix this is uh, saying DHCP first of all uh, for getting the equipment online, and then that equipment will communicate with uh, the, the vendors' uh, staging and pre-staging setups. Uh, we are trying to develop a setup where we use uh, very low bandwidth LTE links, so we are independent of the underlay. It is an important point for us that, and that goes for all of us to land, that uh, we are a underlay provider as well. So. We we all we always see the benefits of that, but we have to look at it from a perspective where we are underlay independent. Um, and then, uh, as as everything else, also goes, we we are building a, a new internal processes. You have to, as a as a company, you have to follow and and making sure that the internal processes can 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 follow along with the technical uh, part of of what you're building. So oh, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it is. So SD WAN provides uh, it's a new software uh, by, uh, and gives a lot of possibilities. Uh, it's a feature com the feature complexity versus uh, template. Simplicity here is is an important point for we are dealing with a lot of features. Uh, the the software provides not just a simple router, a simple firewall, but it tries to combine everything from a uh, router to a application uh, aware uh, uh, box that can manipulate and, and handle traffic in many ways. And for us as a service provider, we also need to look at how do we deploy these solutions for many customers uh, and not just one specific or special solution for everyone. 
So uh, trying to find a good balance between the complexity and uh, how to actually utilize templates uh, is, a, is a big challenge and something we're working on. Um, the, it, the software being where the holy grail means that we are hardware independent. It is a Linux-based software distribution, so uh, and just uh, with the specific IP software uh, built on top. So, as Sebastian also mentioned, we are uh, we we have provide some very flexible solutions with different hardware tiers, uh, both for the branch devices but also for the hosted part of the, the solution. So, for uh, with the SD WAN, it gives us the application and traffic steering. And there's a very big difference in if you're actually doing quality of service or quality of experience. Uh, these concepts are not easy to get your head around. And I will say that understanding these is very important, the differences and how to best utilize them. It's, uh, it's very important both for building customer solutions, but also for distributing that information internally in, in your SDN development group. Uh, of sales, sales or uh, and product management and other parties that you're working with. And then we all we also have a very large range of security functions that we with the software can deploy everywhere. Uh, with our specific setup, we we as Sebastian mentioned focused on the security features being an important point. Uh, but you have to you have to make sure that the hardware can can utilize it and that we actually get uh, uh, what we want from it from it um so uh, yeah it's uh yes no maybe and it depends on on the customer uh but we are actively working towards it being a possibility to support and uh, implement wherever needed uh yeah so uh, it's a feature complexity versus uh, how to uh, actually simplified for uh, when you are providing managed services. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that is the point. Understand the limit yourself. Um, yeah. Tools, I'm very sorry, but we have to cut you short here. We are running very much. It's fine. Time. So this is actually just bonus and I think Sebastian will, will take over if needed. But um, yeah, any questions? Anything? I think I'll go back to my last one. We're we are running terribly much over time, and I think people are very, very hungry in the room. It's uh, 10 past 1, and we haven't had lunch yet. So I think we will we can maybe take one question if, if, if there is something. Otherwise, I really suggest you reach out to Sebastian at Hools uh, with the co questions offline. I can provide you contacts yeah. if you need to. I think both uh, Christian and Sebastian will be there today if, if you're on site. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Let's uh, Let's break for lunch then. Is that okay? Thank you, guys.